G'day folks, I'm Mick from Ironman 4x4. In recent times, I've received more and more inquiries from you guys regarding Suzuki's little Jimny, and specifically whether or not the Jimny is a suitable vehicle to use for overlanding or extended overlanding trips, not just day trips in and around the city. Um, a fair question, the Jimnys are very popular, and when you see these on the road, invariably you'll notice that they have a roof rack on and some other four-wheel drive gear on them. And it's a very good question, because the answer to the question is not a straightforward yes or no. Now, in order to answer this question properly for you, we've decided to buy our own Suzuki Jimny. This is a uh, 1.5 GLX, it's a top of the range model. It is brand new. We've not done anything to this vehicle yet because I've been driving it around for a couple of weeks just to get my head around what this vehicle is like in standard form. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, accessorize this vehicle and get it ready for some serious overlanding. And then we're gonna hand it over to our intrepid film crew, uh, cameraman Dirk, and he is gonna set out into the open spaces, travel further and see more, hashtag, and report back to us whether this vehicle is suitable for overlanding or not. So to start out with, um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the Jimny from an overlanding point of view. This is not gonna be just a normal vehicle review. I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad about this vehicle, uh, specifically thinking about using it for overlanding. And then we'll take you through the journey of uh, what we're gonna to do to the vehicle, what we're gonna to fit to it, what one should and what one shouldn't do to this vehicle. Um, and then we'll start doing some overlanding trips. So we hope you uh, join us on this journey. There's three things that you need to just bear in mind when you're thinking of acquiring a Jimny for overlanding. Three things which will cause you to have a bit of a compromise in the use of the vehicle and in your overlanding. The first thing really is space. Now, Suzuki is a motor manufacturer that specializes in making small city vehicles. They're small, they're very efficient, they're very good, um, but they really are city vehicles. And the Jimny is no different, however, the one thing that makes the Jimny different to all the other small Suzukis and in fact any other car locally available in South Africa is that this is a fully fledged four wheel drive. It has solid front and rear axles, coil sprung suspension and it has a low range transfer case so it is a proper four wheel drive. And I know that all of you are fully aware of the fact that these vehicles are very capable off road. But that's not really the premise of our story. Our story is about how far can you go in this vehicle, how much can you take with. The second obstacle is payload. So this vehicle, um, as it stands here, it's got a full tank of, of fuel and you can load about 340 kilograms or thereabouts of gear and people and whatever in the vehicle before you reach the vehicle's GVM, the gross vehicle mass. Now bear in mind the gross vehicle mass of the vehicle, that's the maximum weight that this vehicle can have when using it on a public road. So the GVM of any vehicle is very important, especially overlanding vehicles. If you exceed the GVM, A, the vehicle is illegal, and B, it could potentially be a safety issue. Your brakes don't work as well, and the suspension will, will be working harder. So not a good idea. The last thing that you need to consider with the Jimny is with a small little 40 liter fuel tank, your fuel range on this vehicle is not great. It's probably anywhere between four and 500 kilometers, um, but if you start doing any low range off-roading or sand driving or anything like that, or carrying a load, or you've got some stuff on the roof and you've got a lot of wind resistance, that fuel consumption is going to go up and your range is gonna drop. And if you're thinking of doing any extended overlanding trips, you'll have to plan them very carefully around fuel stops and or take fuel with you, which brings me back to space and load carrying capabilities. So we've had the Jimny for a couple of weeks now. I've been driving it mostly just to get my head around what it's like to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. Today specifically, I've brought it out here to Breit's Neck. It's a nice rocky mountain pass over this hill behind us, just to get a sense of what it's like when it's doing some serious off-road work um, in standard trim. And we're doing this before we get stuck into accessorizing it. Before we do that though, let's have a quick look inside. The Jimny is all about fun. It is a seriously fun vehicle, and inside it's not much different. I really like the funky, chunky interior. It's uh, not modern and shaped. It's nice and squared off. It just shouts rugged four-wheel drive, which I, I really enjoy. The windscreen's pretty upright, so there's this perception of a lot of space, a lot of headroom, which there is. So it's not a bad place to be. There are a couple of things that need addressing, which we'll, which we'll tell you about. This is the GLX model, so it's the top of the range model. We've got cruise control for the open road, which is always good. We have climate control instead of just a normal air conditioner, and the air conditioner works really, really well. I have tested that. 
I guess the biggest issue inside the cabin here is oddment space or storage space. Yes, there is a cubby hole. It's a fair size. The door pockets are very shallow and they're really meant for maps. But uh, hello car manufacturers, uh, hardly any people use paper maps anymore. So either make them bigger or, you know, just don't bother. You can't fit very much else into these door pockets. It's got a little center console here with two cup holders. Those are the only cup holders in the vehicle. And two large size lattes don't quite fit next to each other, which is an issue if you're a a coffee buff like myself. A little tray down here for keys um, and another one just ahead of the gear lever but very small and really not enough for, um, for, for much else uh, especially if you're going to be spending some time in the vehicle and you've got phones and keys and all kinds of stuff. A 12 volt power socket down here and a USB socket which links up to the um, the stereo system which has Apple CarPlay unfortunately though it doesn't have a reverse camera and while this is a, a quite a small vehicle and easy to maneuver there is a serious blind spot at the back and things like parking areas and whatnot you want to see what's behind you as you're reversing out so we'll have to remedy that with some aftermarket gear um, coming back to the oddman space um, what we're also going to be doing is getting some stuff this vehicle is so popular there is a absolute heap of aftermarket accessories especially inside and especially for storage space so we'll be getting some bits and bobs to go on top of the dashboard here there's some stuff some nice phone holders and key holders and sunny holders and very important addition is proper cup holders so you get a fantastic product we'll show you all about it when we do that there's one on either side it actually bolts to the dashboard of the vehicle they're very solid they're adjustable looking forward to those because these two back here are just really a waste of time the stereo system has only got two speakers in the front doors and uh, I'm driving over here at highway speeds at full volume. Well, it was there or thereabouts, but we'll certainly remedy that because as you quite well know, uh, we really enjoy our music and we enjoy listening to it uh, properly. We also have electric windows. The switches are here in the center console, which is great because it's close to all the wiring of the car and there's less wiring going out to the doors. Driver side automatic up and down and passenger side not. Um, probably a simple relay to make that one work like this one don't know why they don't do it but in any case they're electric nonetheless so the Suzuki Jimny is really a four-seater with no luggage space or it's a two-seater with a relatively good luggage space so as an overlanding vehicle it's going to be one or two people at most and um, certainly not four with luggage you'll notice when you see Suzuki Jimny's on the road that a fair amount of them have got a roof rack on the top which is a very good idea for carrying additional load however you've got to bear in mind what the load carrying capability of the roof is now with a Suzuki Jimny uh, Suzuki claim a 30 kilogram load rating for the roof which is not very much because the average roof rack is anywhere between 14 and 20 kilograms that doesn't leave very much uh, capacity to put up fuel and jerry cans and stuff like that up on top of the roof so that's something to consider in the time that i've driven the Jimny, i have found that the driving position is very good the seats are very good folks that's a wrap for inside um, let's go up this hill and see what she does So this is my first time seriously off-roading in a Jimny and I must tell you that I am I'm very impressed. It has not got any diff lock front or rear but it's got electronic traction control which means any wheel that starts spinning after a couple of moments the system applies the brakes and it mimics traction on that side so some of the traction goes onto the wheel that has got full traction and off we go. It's a bit sensitive on the throttle being only a 1500 cc petrol engine so it's not like my four and a half litre turbocharged v8 diesel land cruiser totally different but i must tell you it's heaps of fun that's for sure and you get used to it you've also got to bear in mind that the uh, 195 80 15 tires and wheels are around 27 inch whereas a 265-65 or 265-70-17 tyre, which is the most popular tyre for dual cap buckies and, and even Land Cruisers most of the time, that's a almost a 32 inch tyre. So it's almost five inches of difference in the diameter of the tyre, which means that the rocks that you're going over to these tyres in this little car seem so much bigger. And you notice it because you get chucked around a bit, but it's not terrible, it's part of the fun. 
but it is just so capable. And this car is bog standard. We've come through some seriously deep holes over some big rocks. I haven't touched any of the drivetrain underneath yet. It's only about 200, 210 mils of clearance under the diff, which doesn't sound like a lot, but like I said, we haven't had any issue today. We're probably gonna put on a very, very slightly taller tire. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the size. I think it's a 2157015, if I'm not mistaken. I may be, may be wrong there, but it's slightly bigger, but not so much that it's gonna affect the gearing or the braking, but it's just a little bit more rubber underneath us and a little bit more um, tire height so that we can uh, better have better traction when we do air the tires down. I think the trick here with this Jimny is to take it very, very easy. We're, you know, I'm just, just on the throttle here. Unfortunately, the torque of this little motor is, well, it's not bad. It's surprisingly good. I haven't stalled it yet, but I'm just, just, just on the throttle here. Um, being careful, A, not to bounce around too much, but B, and very importantly, is just gentle throttle will uh, prevent any tire slippage on rocks because that's where you get cuts. So we came through a really bad piece there and it was just, didn't touch anything, it just carried on. Very impressed, very, very impressed. So it's time to test the Suzuki's downhill assist. And just bear in mind, folks, that with most vehicles, you've got to be stopped, uh, engage it, uh, before it'll work. So don't just roll up to the edge of the cliff and hit it and think it's going to work in most vehicles. So here we go, let's see what, what it does. It's a bit quick. <laughs> it's definitely a bit quick. But that's okay, I've never really enjoyed using downhill assist. I like doing it manually myself. So we're in a serious axle twister now and we might hang a wheel. Actually, even though it's got small axles and small little springs, it's got a surprising amount of articulation. It's just, it's phenomenal, it's great. I'll switch that downhill assist off because it's, uh, It's thinking we're going too quick. Well, wow, just heaps of fun. I mean, that's a serious obstacle I just went through. Any dual cab pickup would just get stuck there, no matter how tall it's lifted. That was some serious holes. And it just cruised through it like nothing. Very, very, very impressive. That's just a heap of fun. Eh? That is just an absolute heap of fun. The question remains, how good is it for long distance overlanding? I must say though, on road, uh, especially when the road's uneven and rough like our back roads are, being solid front axle, the axle when it's articulating it does tend to steer around, so you've really got to focus and stay on your side of the road. Um, I'm quite used to it in the Land Cruiser, but somebody move, coming from an independently sprung vehicle that may be a bit of a challenge, but you get used to it pretty quickly. But I think I've seen enough. Um, I think it's time to uh, turn this little vehicle into a proper overlanding vehicle, and we're going to show you how we do that. The do's, the don'ts, I'm really looking forward to it. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel and certainly hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when the next episode is. And the next episode is really the, the start of the build. So we hope you, uh, you join us then. See you later. Just as we're about to roll, bees. They're off to my aftershave. My cologne, did you smell my cologne in the car, Dirkie? <laughs>